We like the predictable. And if the the unknown makes us often back up, but it's it's these these type of adventures, you know, they, they have these um these fables, these stories, right? But they talk about dragons and monsters and things of this nature. But these are these are based on human archetypes and journeys that we have to go on, right? And soul searching mm -hmm. and and our, and our inner journeys. We really, you know, it's put in a fable, but it's talking about what goes on. The monsters. There's no monster outside, but there's a monster inside our head, right? Mm -hmm. Those are our fears, our nightmares. Mm -hmm. And there's something about us being able to trust ourselves to be brave enough to be the hero in our own story, right? Mm -hmm. And embody the journey. Mm -hmm. But a bit of a breakdown, right? And so people become uh, experts at the superficial level of the relationship, the physical level. Mm -hmm. Go in, we have the electric, um, the electricity, we have the cocaine, the, the, the bodily chemicals that re repeat, um, replicate the high of a cocaine rush, right? We become mm -hmm. addicted to that kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Infatuation stage. Mm -hmm. And then when the level of commitment is supposed to kick in, as the rush comes down and we trust ourselves and we trust this person that we're, we're getting to know, some people avoid that relational depth, break off and then repeat the cycle. And they're caught in the same cycle, wash, spin, rinse, and repeat. Wash, bend, rinse, and repeat. Yeah. Mm, okay. So now like, this. Let me, put, let me put it this way. So you might have mm -hmm. people. I'm gonna stay away from the, the um, certain language, loaded terminology that's kind of like used to weaponize. But people may have had partners, many partners, or a number of partners, but they mm -hmm. haven't had depth because it's always been soup. It's always been at that superficial level. They may okay. lack that long-term and that level of depth in the relationship. So although they've been around, it may seem worldly on the outside, really they've got no experience in love in a true sense or in mm. relationship in a true sense, at a, okay. at a relational depth. Mm. I don't know if I'm okay. making sense, my sister. Well, you're making a lot of sense. I have, I, I'm just not trying to interrupt you, but it's making a lot of sense. I have a lot of questions. So um, just to be clear for the audience, because when I, as I'm hearing you say, you know, they, they got this rush and then they come down. And so how is this taking place from your perspective? Are we talking about hormones? Are we talking about the brain? Are we talking about, you said infatuation, that type of thing. Can you go into a little bit more detail on that? And then I want to go back into the fear. Yeah, there is, there is, there is research around, um, new, neurological research around brain activity when people fall for somebody. And they say okay. that the, the, the brain produces um, certain dopamines certain hormones that mimic the rush of a cocaine high and so that's mm -hmm. why when people fall in love they are um they they drunk in love is a real it's a real thing yeah, they become intoxicated you know you can become intoxicated by somebody mm -hmm. you can become intoxicated by that person and okay. you know if the phone rings and it's them on the phone you know your, your heart rate can change your physiology can change yeah, yeah, right yeah. excitement mm -hmm. rush this is like a high your, your the ability to to think critically is that hemisphere of the brain is is is, is shut down. It's only mm -hmm. after the relationship, or they've come out of that phase, and in talking to a friend and talking to an associate and saying, "Hey, male or female, right, man or woman, but what made you do that?" Or you remember when you said X, Y, and Z, or you know, what, what was good then? What was that about? It's like, hey, mm -hmm. <laughs> love, stands up, yeah. surrender. I, I was in, you know, I wasn't in my right mind the state of mind you know and if you've been there all you're going to do is empathize because you've been there you know there's been times yeah. in your life when you had that feeling and your brain just wasn't working or your intellect your critical thinking just wasn't working like it normally does mm. you know and that's not okay. crime that's part of our human that's part of our humanity mm. yes so now as this individual or these individuals come down off of this rush. Now we the dopamine level is lowered and now we switch into fear, right? Is this fear accompanied by now a different hormone, a different hemisphere of the brain? And now are they fearful of the results of the relationship? Are they fearful of themselves and how they you know, project themselves in the relationship? When you say fear, what are you talking about? And I hope I didn't throw too much at you at one time, but we can uh, take it piece by piece. I'll try and unpack that. So <laughs> the, the, the research is talking about the bodily chemicals, right? These hormones 
re, re, what they call it homeostasis it's gonna it's gonna return to its normal mm-hmm. yeah resting Down. resting mm-hmm. rate yeah but for the person who's at the height that can feel like a crash <laughs> like, what's wrong like you know i don't get those butterflies anymore i don't get that sensation is there something wrong there isn't anything wrong that's normality mm-hmm. that's life and what's supposed to kick in is the tutelage from the culture right the the the, what do they call the folkways the norms of the culture supposed to kick in the responsibility the level of commitment the things that i've seen modeled around me that's been consciously absorbed watching my elders and watching older people older folk even folk and also the things that have gone on unconsciously but again informing you know cultural norms and behavioral norms and expectations but then again the fear is now I'm going in deep. Now this is real. Now this is real vulnerable. I'm like an onion. I'm taking off layers and really exposing myself. There's something exposing yourself physically. That's one thing. That's one level of vulnerability. And in the society that we live in, if we go by the billboards and the, the media and the social media, the physical um, exposure is an easy one because we're, that's in our face and we're, we're, we're socialized and, you know, um, influenced that way, um, especially in this I wouldn't even say Western, it's Greco Roman culture. It's a lot about nakedness. And there isn't anything wrong with the human body and nakedness, but everything has a context, right? And right, sometimes right. when something is overdone, it can what can the beautiful can become obscene. Like mm-hmm. maybe look that sugar is good for you, but if you eat sugar all day, it can kill you literally. Right. Um right. so we're used to the nakedness physically, but the emotional okay. nakedness, the emotional vulnerability, that trust. It isn't so socialized into our culture. And in fact, right. um, I would say Western culture, even as Nubians, we're influenced because of where we live geographically and where we live, where we, where, how we're socialized, the forums we gain our information from, the ideas, the movies, the music, the literature, these mm. memes that we see pop up on them, social media. We don't know who the hell half of them and where they were coming from, what's their ground. Mm-hmm. But it's very individualistic. It's very much about, I don't need anyone. It's very much about toughness mm. and on to the next, on to the next one. And, you know, if that or to the no. next, superficial. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's so very true. You're not really being wired or mm-hmm. uh, initiated into a way of being in where, you know, that means something to me. You know, mm. that fracture troubled me. Right? And... I need to be accountable for maybe my, my contribution to that. And so they're just mm. calling my, my ex a narcissist, which is kind of easy, right? Catch all. Nothing for me to grow from, right? Because everything that went wrong is, is explained in the label I'm going to give them. They were narcissistic, right? So what do I need to, why, why do I need to um, introspect and see what I contributed to the situation? So with that lack of true allege for depth, scary you're unprepared again talking about the dragon now it's time to confront the dragon people get shy people get bashful and so like i said we go back to that wash bin rinse and repeat they find a way to self-sabotage self-destruct and exit okay exit okay yeah i love something that you just said and i hope the audience caught it right um that we don't really exercise we go out here we you know we're naked physically you know very exposed and everything so over sexualized but we don't it's exercise emotional nakedness right and that we we don't acknowledge the traumas etc or even admit our um our part in it Right. So I think that's very, very important. And so have you ever counseled couples that engage in these unhealthy behaviors and they see it to be normal, you know, behave, behaviors and relationships towards each other, but they see it to be normal. And have you seen what is the most frequent behavior that you have seen to be unhealthy practices? I think, no, the, the, the most common um, and it's a very much a. It might seem like a cliche, but in terms of the communication, not that people don't communicate, um, the most common theme that runs through, regardless of ethnicity, regardless of social class, regardless of religious background, the most common thing I see with couples is when people are communicating to represent their argument why they're right, 
but they're not really listening. So we, we, before we used to have this kind of stereotype, oh, people don't communicate or men don't talk, right? But it's not a matter of people not talking. It literally is a matter sometimes of people not listening. People hearing and not listening. They're not really tuning into um, the pain, the hurt, the disappointment, the vulnerability behind what the other person is is sharing. And sometimes because of that passion that people share when they when they're sexually intimate and the nature of the relationship, because of that. Um, something happens in that and where because of the passion and it become a, a kind of obscuring factor, um, people are more concerned about being right. Mm. I have a um, psychotherapist colleague, she uses this phrase, um, do you want to do you want to do you want to win the argument or do you want to stay married? Do you want to be right or do you want to stay married? Because people mm. sometimes lose sight of that. Mm. And they get caught in that cycle of, but no, it wasn't on the Tuesday. Remember, it was a Wednesday. 